Morphin Time. Time. Hey guys, Joseph here. And Carlos. And this is The Passenger Seat. All right, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about 90s movies. Not just any 90s movies, though. We're going to go with uh, a little more into the nerd sort of culture, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of 90s movies, but uh, yeah, we, we decided to sort of narrow it down to five. Specifically choices that meant more to us than, yeah, for than sure. anything else. Because we know that there's a lot of movies out there, especially nerd movies, but some of them just weren't as um, impactful. Yeah. Um, and we say nerdy movies because there's a lot of dramas and um, action movie. I mean, they can be action, but they just have like a nerdy touch. To yeah, them. a lot of our movies are more sci-fi more than anything else. And uh, we're gonna be starting with. <laughs> Jurassic Park. Oh yeah. Cool. So Jurassic Park. Um, Obviously, uh, if you haven't heard it, if you haven't yeah, heard it, I was gonna yeah, say, you live should, under a rock. <laughs> yeah, you should probably turn that spaceship around and, you know, land on planet Earth. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Jurassic Park first came out in 1993. The um, year I was born. Yeah, it's a old ass mo- <laughs> <laughs> sci fi adventure movie. Um, it's directed by none other than uh, Steven Spielberg. That's true. <laughs> that is a Steven Spielberg film. <laughs> It's actually based on a 1990 novel of the same name. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the writer of the novel is Michael, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's like Crichton or Crichton, something like that. You tried. I'm so sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the film is set in a fictional island, um, mm -hmm. in like Central America, right? Close to Costa Rica. Yep. I remember that. Um, and it's basically, uh, this wealthy businessman called John Hammond mm. um, who sort of has this fetish for dinosaurs. <laughs> he, I this. So, fascination. Fascination, sure, <laughs> sure. He teams up with a bunch of genetic scientists to bring them back. To Yeah, to sort of bring them out of extinction and mm. have his own little wildlife park. Do you imagine dinosaurs. that though? Just like no. in real life someone says no. come to this island and see all these dinosaurs? Why? Pretty cool. No. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. First Harambe, next you're gonna have to shoot a dinosaur. <laughs> Come on. How far do we have to go? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's there's like some industrial sabotage and uh, pretty much the power supply for the whole park uh, sh is shut off. And that also shuts off the security measures because yeah, for that's... some reason they don't have a backup contingency. Nope. So they're just, just like, oh, if the power goes off, don't worry. The dinosaurs will just eat the... Eat, eat all the, the people eat there? Eat all the visitors. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's not that bad. It's not like a level five cast rock. <laughs> it's not like somebody fell in the dinosaur pit and he got shot. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, yeah. So uh, the budget for the movie, this is an interesting fact for me. The budget of the movie was actually uh, six, 63 million, right? You, you go like that. It's like, oh. That's very little, actually. Yes. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You know, you want to know how much it made in box office? $1.033 billion. Oh, God. Yeah. It made a billion dollars off of 63. That's almost 10 times the amount of what it, you know, what the budget was for the movie. You would almost think the second one would be better. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, okay. So, jumping into fun facts. Um, so, Spielberg actually found out about Jurassic Park um, while working on ER. Oh, okay. Because yeah. apparently uh, Michael Crichton, who's the writer of the novel of Jurassic Park, was also working on ER. Mm. And, uh, yeah. So, he, you know, Steven Spielberg was so excited about the idea um, that he even went as far as to buy the movie rights before the novel was even published. Are you serious? Yeah. So he went to Universal and bought the movie rights of the movie before the novel even got published. That's crazy. Yeah. It's called an inside job. <laughs> it's called being smart, I guess. Of course. <laughs> to gambling, really. I mean, after making that much. Mm. Um, also, uh, Jurassic Park 
were, you know, while being filmed. It was, um, it was actually shot on location uh, on an island in Hawaii. I'm not going to mention the name because I'll probably, like, butcher it. And it'll be so bad. Uh, it's like Kauai. Okay. I hope I said that right. Um, and a hurricane, the most powerful hurricane to hit Hawaii, uh, it was called Hurricane Iniki or something like that, was the most powerful hurricane in record history to hit Hawaii, hit during during uh, filming of Jurassic Park. Nice. So, crazy. crazy that's pretty crazy, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all we have for Jurassic. I do love those movies, though. I got yeah. They're good movies. Yeah, they are. Jurassic Park is cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, but now we're jumping into uh, <laughs> to our next film. Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. Welcome to the Space Jam. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> so, Space Jam. <laughs> Anyways. Space Jam. Space Jam. There 1996. We go. Now, who doesn't remember Space Jam? You know, the funny part about Space Jam is just one of those movies where it's a cult classic now. Oh, yeah. And when it came out, critics, like, panned it. Like, a lot of people actually thought it was bad. It's on Netflix. Yes. You know, no sponsor. But now, it's a cult classic. It's even going to get a second movie. Yeah. yeah. People just loved it that much. That LeBron James. <laughs> LeBron James. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, obviously, starring Michael Jordan, right? Yes. Um, it's a live-action, animated uh, sort of sports comedy film. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't know where. Like, maybe you found out the information, but it's like a weird idea to just come up with. Like, the concept is really out there. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, but no, I'll tell you why though. So it's a fictionalized uh, sort of story of what happened between his retirement mm. from the NBA in those couple of years that he was he was doing that. Right. Uh, it was like 1993 to 95. Right. So between that time, um, he's enlisted by the Looney Tunes yeah. to pretty much play um, a so match against a couple of aliens who are trying the monsters. to monsters. Yeah, the monsters, right? Yeah. And they were trying to enslave the Looney Tunes to become part of like a, a theme park or something. Yes, 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 yes. And to you know to not have to do that, they mm. they play the aliens in a basketball match. The Alien, they go to the they go to N- NBA stars mm. and they like get into their body and they steal all their abilities, and yeah, and suddenly the Looney Tunes are like, "What? We need MJ." Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember that too. Um, they steal him from a golf hole. Yeah, yeah they right, get sucked in. They get sucked <laughs> into, the, into the hole. Yep. Uh, so the budget for this movie was actually eighty million dollars, which was more than Jurassic Park. Mm. And it only got two hundred thirty million dollars, so not that much. Yeah, it's I I I, re- I remember reading that Space Jam didn't actually get a lot of love from from critics and people because uh, acting wise it's not that great. And but uh, it's it's just turned into such a classic. It was that, really cool to see like mm, you know, uh, but uh, Bugs and the rest of the gang. Yeah. Uh, up in a movie with MJ. I mean, come on. And I, and especially in that time, '96. Yeah. For, for MJ, he, who didn't want to yeah. see MJ on the big screen with Looney Tunes? Like, duh. Yeah. One of the most things I remember uh, was that is when Lola Bunny was created. That was actually one of my fun facts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're uh, right. See, that was her first appearance. She was created specifically for Space Jam. And for some reason, Bill Murray was in the movie, Bill which Murray was really there. random because he appeared at the end just. Helping them? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. Why he Bill came, Murray? Yeah. Why? <laughs> didn't he, Calm down. Uh, didn't he come out at the beginning? He, he was playing uh, golf with them too. Wasn't yeah, 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 he was. He was mm-hmm. like one of his friends. Um, so yeah, so, uh, you know, going back to what you were saying, like how they come up with the idea of the movie. So the concept actually began uh, one year before the movie was released. Okay. And it started off uh, with this commercial. It was called, it was a Nike commercial. Do it, do it. Aha. Aha. Night commercial, no sponsor. Um, dude. Um, and the commercial was Hair Jordan. Hair as in, you know, rabbit. H A R E. What, you mean like the Jordan shoes? Like the Air Jordan? The Air Jordan, Jordans? yeah. And it was Bugs. That's MJ. Okay, because I remember there are, there are shoes there are called the Hair Jordans. Right. So 
his, you know, Michael Jordan's agent, uh, David Falk, he apparently saw it and he saw the potential for it to go to the big screen. Mm -hmm. um, he went to Warner Brothers, right? And he pitched them the idea and he went with perfect timing because Warner Brothers was looking for a way to relaunch Looney Tunes. Oh, okay. So they're like, you know what? Let's use Michael Jordan. And yeah, it worked. It Best worked. choice. Um, Warner Brothers built uh, Jordan his own gym in the set because, you know, he was prepping for the mm. return uh, and doing the championship run with the Bulls. Mm -hmm. So get this. Did you know that in between takes, um, they, you know, Mike would play like pickup games with people? Oh, okay. Right. And so uh, there's an actor uh, who's like an extra called Keith Gibbs. Mm. And he, uh, quote, you know, quote unquote, he said, uh, you know, he walks in and then there's Reggie, Mil uh, Reggie Miller, uh, Charles Barkley, Alonzo Mourning, uh, Charles Oakley, and then Grant Hill shows up. <laughs> and then it's uh, Jerry Stackhouse. And all of a sudden, it turns into like an NBA all star pickup game. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty funny, right? That actually must have been really cool. Because you're you're just it. chilling out there. You're yeah. like, oh shoot, MJ, and then all of a sudden, oh oh oh, whoop, oh, oh. and they're just there dunking on each other and stuff, and <laughs> they're like you know, seven foot tall, and this dude just like, Jesus Christ, um, it's the highest grossing basketball film ever made. Okay, I mean, I could I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it launched a soundtrack that went platinum. Oh, the soundtrack was amazing. Yeah, like it really was. Every a lot of a lot of the music that was just mm -hmm. it was really good. It was really good. Um, yeah. So that wraps up Space Jam. I'm not gonna mention the Space Jam Jordan Elevens. Oh Dang. my god! Here we go. Here we go. Shoot. Space Jam Jordan Elevens got released because of that movie. One of the classic, most retro shoes. They still haven't retroed it for the second one, but we'll see what happens. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, anyways, that was Space Jam. Great movie. Now our, to our, on to our next movie from 1990. Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, the live action one from 1990, uh, with the puppets and the people in the suits. And man, that movie was amazing, though. Uh, do you remember that movie? That I sort, sort of. of. Sort yeah. of. Yeah. I think it's on Netflix. I think all three of them are. I have to rewatch them for sure. Oh, I got you. <laughs> so this is directed by Steve Barron. Um, essentially, it's a story about the Ninja Turtles. Um, slightly based on the comics. Um, not fully. Uh, you know, they start out by saving April O'Neil in the beginning when she gets mugged. And then Raphael goes and meets Casey Jones because he gets mad or whatever. And the original story of Shredder wanting to take over New York but he figures out that the tur uh, his old uh, rival is still alive so he wants to find the turtles and destroy them and it's just a lot of good fun it's what you picture any Teenage Mutant Ninja Story to be fun fact about that is uh, this movie was almost not going to get released because it was you know the, the the original TV show that really like kiddish one with like all the silliness it they said that the movie was gonna to be too violent. Oh really? And they didn't want to release it because the Ninja Turtles has always been for kids. Yeah. And as soon as they release it, at that time, it was the highest grossing independent film. Because yeah. no studio wanted to pick it up. Because they didn't want to be the ones who like, you know, tisk tisk studios. I hope you learned <laughs> your lesson. And uh, it it exploded and uh, then there goes all the toy companies wanting to work with them and like make make a second movie and it it just went crazy. Uh, one of the biggest things that helped that movie, and you'll notice it by the, if you ever watched the third movie, mm. uh, the animatronic heads and the costumes were made by Jim Henson Studios. Oh, really? Yeah, Jim Henson. For you, oh. for you guys out there who don't know, Jim Henson is the creator of the Muppets. Mm. Um, and then he died before the third film came out. And it, you'll see it when you see the third film; they look pretty bad. Like his studio just made them amazing. Uh, but he was there. He was there on set and like helping with like the face mask because they would be in the costumes. It was always stunt. Uh, these stunt guys and the voice guys are two different people. Yeah. So it'd be like these, uh, I believe, uh, Japanese stuntmen uh, who knew ninjutsu would be in the costumes and the helmet itself, it's animatronic. So another guy would be in the back moving it. So it matches with whatever the voice is saying. 
And the voice actors would just simply be in a booth. That sounds like a lot of work. Far. I know. It was Jesus a lot Christ. of work. Uh, the actor of Raphael, Josh Paez, um, was claustrophobic. So oh. after every take that they would do, he would quickly have to take off the helmet because he was gonna, he was freaking out. He would do the scenes and then freak out and then take off the helmet. Jesus. He's like uh, Christian, Christian Bale. Because Christian Bale was is also uh, claustrophobic. claustrophobic really? and, yeah, that's why the the in Batman he has like a really puffy um, suit. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess you tell uh, fun facts. Props for those guys powering through, I guess, because yeah. if they were really freaking out under that suit, that's pretty crazy, actually. Yep. yep. The ending of this movie where they defeat Shredder and uh, Casey Jones. Looks like he kills him inside a trash compactor, whatever the case may be. And then they celebrate on the roof and they say Kawabunga and then the, the power song comes Kawabunga. on. Um, but actually, the original shots had a different ending where it showed. Do you remember in the first movie that little redhead kid? Uh, no, I really don't. I don't remember too much. I don't remember his name, but there's a little redheaded kid and then April O'Neil. And they actually, and the, diff- the alternate ending, they go to a, a, a comic book publisher. And they start mentioning this idea of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like if they were the ones who invented it, like a meta oh, type shoot. of ending. But it just didn't go through. Like they, they scrapped it and didn't do it. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. But it's one of my favorite 90s films, and that's why I, I, I like to put it on this list. Cool. All right. Now we're going into our next one. And that's going to come the Man in Black. Galaxy Defenders. I was going to say, <laughs> won't let you remember. <laughs> Man, Men in Black. The Man in Black, yeah. So, Men in Black, 1997. All right. Classic. Will, Willie, Willie Smith. Of course. And uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, yeah, so um, it's a sci-fi action comedy, right? Yeah. It's uh, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld. Sonnenfeld? Sonnenfeld. <laughs> um, you really bad with it. Yeah, it's, I'm just butchering. <laughs> <laughs> Comic books. Uh, is, it was actually written by Lowell Cunningham. Um, yeah, it was based on a comic, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Wasn't he, uh, well, maybe I'm wrong, was he? Was the character Will Smith white at first? I have no clue. Oh, okay. I yeah. never got into the comic books. It was uh, strictly uh, movies and the animated TV series for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Um, so, it's about two agents of a secret organization uh, called the Men in Black, mm-hmm. right? Uh, who supervise extraterrestrials uh, living on Earth, and they're trying to hide within, uh, you know, society. Yeah. Um, that's that's a pretty cool concept, you know. You usually think, you know, you your mind would go into thinking like, oh, these guys are gonna like exterminate aliens. Yeah. Which they do to a certain extent, but the fact that they also accept that aliens are like coexisting with us. And they monitor them. Yeah, some you of them are good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's, yeah. a, that's a pretty cool way to look at things. <laughs> that movie was so great. It's If you rewatch it, it's very 90s. Yeah. It's like a straight up 90s film. Uh, for me, the most memorable thing uh, from that movie is Cockroach Man. <laughs> oh, yes. Which, if those of you who don't know, he Ooh. is the actor of uh, Kingpin and Daredevil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Sugar. <laughs> Water. 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 <laughs> Jeez! Oh God! <laughs> so the budget for that movie, <laughs> budget for that movie is ninety million dollars. Uh, box office made uh, almost six hundred mil. Mm. Pretty good. Yeah. Like, pretty good return. So uh, a few fun facts. So uh, the director uh, Barry Sonnenfeld didn't want to work with Tommy Lee Jones because oh. apparently he had saw him on an interview and he saw his demeanor and he was like, "Geez, that guy looks like like it'd be horrible to work with." But when they actually worked together, he actually really uh, enjoyed working with him. Yeah, it's because he has a rest of his face. Yeah. No. That's basically why. Because Tommy Lee <laughs> Jones always has a rest of his face. Right. <laughs> um, there are actually people who think that the Men in Black exist. Oh, why am I not surprised? Um, and the first mention or uh, abbreviation uh, of MIB was actually uh, a man named John Keel, mm. who was the author of the Mothman Prophecies. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, get this, and this is the f- this is pretty crazy to me. A Men in Black and Twenty One Jump Street mashup was actually discussed. I would have loved to see that, but like, like with Johnny Depp or? N- n- no, we're talking uh, Channing Tatum 
with uh, oh, later Joan, later in oh, Channing Tatum, wow. Jonah Hill, Will Smith, and Tommy Lee Jones. That would have been great. Um, you know that Will Smith came up for the plot of Men in Black Three. Well, oh f- yes, I actually knew that one. He was one of the producers too. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, yeah. While filming uh, Men in Black Two, he came up with the idea, mm. and uh, he pitched it to the director. And yeah, that's a good one actually. Men in Black Three is really yeah. good. Where they had Josh Brolin playing a younger Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. Mm. Um, then the the theme for the one we were just singing, right? The Will Smith one. Yeah. Yeah. The theme for for Men in Black was actually uh, his first solo hit. Really? Yeah. Wait, wait, his first... Oh, solo, solo hit. hit. Oh, okay, yeah. you're right. You're Very right. Very important. So, yeah. That's a pretty cool... That's a pretty cool fact. That is pretty cool. <laughs> that's... And, yeah. So, that wraps up uh, what I have for Men in Black. And uh, I think now we can uh, jump into our last movie. Now, so I'm going to say this before we get jump into it. It is not a critically acclaimed movie, but it is one of the biggest 90s movies for us. It was mm. very, like our childhood... That was such a great movie. And we are talking about the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. Go, go, Power Rangers! What was the other songs in that movie? Um, Freedom! Oh. It's uh, your... Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and it's... um. Uh, Keep on yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is 1995, um, right in the middle of the 90s. Uh, this was produced by Brian Spicer. Um, the movie essentially is about, it takes off from the show of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, and they're living their normal life and all of a sudden, you know, Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed come up with this idea to uncover one of the ancient powerful beings, mm-hmm. which was Ivan Ooze. Yeah, the big purple guy. Um, and Ivan Ooze plans to take over the city and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fight against him. Lose have to go and regain their uh they have to go to the forest and do like the they animal. Have to, yeah, they have to regain their powers and they go and they get like a spirit new, animal powers. New, yeah, they yeah. get like new animals because at the beginning it was like uh you know the There was the regular dinosaurs and right, stuff right. like that, yeah, exactly. And then they changed to that and then when they uh, when the movie was over and they fell back into the show, they still had that. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then they reverted back to the dinosaurs. Oh, I actually sorry. like some of the some of the spirit animals or the megazords for them cuz uh, mm. the was it the frog was, was the, the black, black ranger. ranger. Blue was the wolf. wolf. Yellow was the bear. Mhm. Pink was uh the crane. Oh, the crane. Mm-hmm. Right. And then red was the gorilla. Mhm. Oh. And then white was the eagle. Blue. Eagle or something like that. Falcon. The falcon. Falcon. White Falcon. White Falcon. <laughs> so actually, I don't know a lot of you people noticed this. We didn't notice it when we were kids. I don't. Well, I didn't really notice it or put a lot of attention to it. But the black, yellow, and red ranger are different actors and different characters. Uh, you, obviously, it's not the Asian one. It's you know, it's not the African American guy. And oh, it's okay. not. It's not um, the other actor of the Red Ranger. Um, what's his name? I forget their names, mm. but it's you know it's not uh, yes it's not it's not Zach uh, or uh, whatever their names were. But the, Jason David Frank was was the original. The, the ones who stayed were Jason David Frank, right. the Pink Ranger, and and that's it, mm. right? Yeah. Oh, and the Blue Ranger, and the, which was Billy. Yeah, Billy. yeah. So they actually. They were getting treated so badly in the television series. They were only getting paid six hundred dollars a week, and they were in these conditions where the when they were announcing a movie, they saw an opportunity. These three rangers specifically, yellow, black, and red, saw an opportunity to boost up their pay, or they won't do the movie. So the producers and director look at them and say, <laughs> "Too bad. We'll just get have other actors." Wow. And they did. Totally. And they they left the show and everything because they felt really disrespected. Treated them like total garbage. I would have too. I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. That's why they're not in that movie. Uh, funny part is the original director, the one who, you know, kicked them out or whatever the case may be, uh, then left. He did all that for nothing. What a douche. And then at last minute, because they had no one to come and direct, because no one wanted to, they grabbed a cameraman. To direct the movie? The director of the movie, Brian <laughs> Spicer, is a cameraman. That's his first movie. 
hilarious. And they grabbed him, be- and they grabbed him because apparently he has like little indie films that he did and no one knew. <laughs> but that here's sounds, the kicker. That sounds hella condescending. I know. Just like he has little films. And so yeah. They grabbed him, you know. And they do just, the thing, Johnny. They were like, okay, jump on it. And then he said to them, I don't know anything about this. I've never <laughs> even watched the show. So he had to sit. A, uh, like through a whole night, I, I believe it was like 12 hours of watching the My Immortal Power Rangers just to get an idea of what it's about. But it's okay because we love that movie, so it turned out great. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, but they were treated, uh, they were still treated badly during the movie. I don't know what went on. There was a lot of issues back then in the 90s with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but now they're just different. But they were the suits were too heavy. They were underpaid. Uh, they couldn't get their own trailers. There was a lot of stuff that was going on with those poor kids. Because at the end, they were, they were only in their 20s. They were young, they were naive, and they wanted to be actors. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're not talking about this movie, sadly. We'll get to it eventually. But uh, it's just like, it happens a lot in movies. Um, mm. American Pie with, uh, and I forget his name. Is it Scott? The guy who plays uh, Stifler? Mm-hmm. He actually got paid $8,000 for that movie. In total? For that first movie, first American Pie, eight thousand dollars. That's it. That sucks. Yeah, but when you're young, you don't know better. Yeah, and plus he, I, I believe he didn't have any acting experience. He was. Oh, like, okay. He was working like, I don't know what he was working in, but they pretty much just took him and said like, hey, yeah. So I'm gonna throw in a funny fact now. Okay. <laughs> so they were doing a stunt, right? And it was a stunt double who was dressed as one of the little. Uh, Ravens okay. that Ivan News had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on a rope and he was jumping down towards Jason Denver Frank, and Jason Denver Frank had to kick him. That was that's all he had to do. He kicked him. He swerved back. He was supposed to go all the way back. He swerved back and he was falling again. And he told Jason Denver Frank, "Hey, kick me one more time. I need to go all the way to the end." <laughs> so what happens is, and this is Jason Denver Frank, and he's an MMA fighter and everything. He kicks him <laughs> so hard. The guy in the the stuntman the, in the Falcon suit, whatever the Raven suit, is unconscious. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about too. Oh God! <laughs> and they kept that role on the film. I right? think so. Yes, it was. <laughs> Dude, that's funny. I didn't know about that. Yeah, one. I know exactly which one you're talking about. It was so funny too because you see it in the movie and you're like, okay. yeah. But in real life, the guy was unconscious. He kicked him so hard that he knocked him out. That's hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, it's one of my one of my favorite films, um, 90s Hands Out. I watched this repeatedly as a kid. Mighty Morphin, I grew up with it. Um, so I have a lot of respect for it, even though it wasn't critically acclaimed. Mm-hmm. I can, till this day, I can still rewatch it. Yeah, uh, same for me. Uh, I grew up with everything Mighty Morphin because of my brother. Talk about you, Gio. <laughs> um, and yeah, he'll never let me live it down because, so he, he he's a huge Power Rangers fan. Okay. And he had um, all the Megazords. Yes. In their boxes, pristine. Nice. You um, opened one, didn't you? I didn't just open one. I apparently opened all of them. But it doesn't in there. I threw them in the pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he never lets me live it down. I still own those Megazords. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you're saving up for it. <laughs> and you know, believe they're vintage now. <laughs> <laughs> they are quite expensive. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and you know, growing up and being, you know, growing up to be a collector uh, in my own right, I I, re- I feel really bad about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, obviously, continue to make sequels, uh, live action, and another, you know, another reboot movie, and then there's another one coming up too. And Power Rangers hasn't stopped; it's still going. Yeah. It keeps going. So, yeah, that's uh, that's all our movies here for today from the '90s. Hope mm-hmm. you guys enjoyed this. Uh, right. Yeah. Make sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe. It will mm. help us out greatly. And uh, we thank all of those who've given us uh, your support until now. You guys have been great. And uh, yeah, we hope that you can keep enjoying the uh, these videos that we do. And and hopefully you guys will create a Kickstarter for Joseph's brother, <laughs> earning uh, <laughs> earning money for for Megazords. Um, a GoFundMe page. A GoFundMe page. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you guys will take a ride with us next time here in The, the Passenger Seat. Oh.
Okay, that's good. We both got Nike jackets. Yeah. Oh, Nike combining. This is the part that's always gonna be annoying. Nike combining. Mic check. And the mic's off. Okay. Uh, we might have to raise it just a little bit. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. One more, one more test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more test. One. <laughs> did he, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he have a an a, like? Didn't he jump kick someone and go white falcon kick? Am I am I crazy? Falcon kick. <laughs> falcon kick. White falcon kick. No, I don't know. Actually, keep that in mind. I have a fun fact for later about that. Okay. Yeah. His, you know, Michael Jordan's agent, uh, David Falk, he, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but David whatever, <laughs> sorry, David Falk, <laughs> David Falk, <laughs> David Falk, okay, yes, whatever, <laughs> um, um, so again, budget for that, uh, budget, 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 take it, harder, better, <laughs> was, that is when Lola Bunny was created. That was actually one of my fun facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're uh, right. See, that was her first appearance. She was created specifically for Space Jam. And uh, the same year, that's when uh, furries first came about. <laughs> hey, no judgment towards anyone who might like that. Uh, I know for a fact we're not into that, but hey, all power to you. You know what I'm saying? If you want to... Fantasize about Lola Bunny. That's all you. Any... <laughs> what song do you want to use for that? One? I don't know. There's a, there's a ton of them. There's, there's a... a ton. Everybody get up! Yeah. It's time to slam now. Welcome to the Space Jam. Yeah. All right, all right. Let's not use any R. Kelly songs. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, they're just there dunking on each other and stuff, and <laughs> like you know, seven foot tall, and this dude just like, Jesus Christ. Um, Piper Perry must feel like. Okay. What? <laughs> Reverend just went over here. <laughs>